friends. I hope you're staying safe and staying a lot. My name is Gloria, and I would like to welcome you to How CCG Heritage Heaven Online Service. If today is your very first time of joining our online service, we'd like to say thank you for joining us, and that we hope you will enjoy the service. Today is Father's Day, and I know today brings a lot of emotions for men and women all over the world. Some people have lost a loving father. Some never even knew their dad. And that there are, those, there are some of us that are expecting to be fathers soon. And so many different um, situations that we have around father-child relationship. But the good news is that God can use this to draw us closer to him because he is our true father who remains faithful and loves us unconditionally. I want to wish everybody all over the world Happy Father's Day. And I would like you to join me in praying for all the fathers all over the world. Father Lord, we thank you for this morning. We pray specifically for all the men all over the world. Your word in Ephesians 6, 4, specifically instruct fathers to bring up children with discipline and instructions of God. We ask for strength. We ask for wisdom to help them carry out this instruction successfully and in a spiritual way in the name of Jesus. We also remember all the single fathers who are struggling to raise their children alone. We know that it's a difficult time. We know we ask for strength. We ask for discernment to help them through whatever they are going through this morning. We pray you bless every father with spiritual blessings and let them know that they are not alone in the tax that you have given them to support and provide for those that are under them. Father, Lord, we pray this morning that they shall continue to be the head and not the tail in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. You will provide for them in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Even as we continue the service, Father, Lord, this morning, help us, Lord. Let the Holy Spirit teach us himself in the name of Jesus from the praise and worship to the preaching, Father, please accept our praises, accept our worship in the name of Jesus, and speak to us this morning in the name of Jesus. Thank you, and God bless you. As you enjoy the service, I will now ask Pastor Benny to lead us in praise and worship. God bless you. What are you doing here this early morning? What is your time? You just sit here. Ah, are you Do you know I should still be sleeping by this time? What is it that I know it? I just came to remind you of the 50,000 pounds given last week. So that 50,000 could not wait for you to be What is so serious? He looked at the 50,000 sheep by me. And that is just that I'm broke. I need this money to turn around. So it's so good for me to wake up. No, I, I, I want to go out there. I don't have 50,000. I don't. Have 50, I don't. No. I told you about that. That's just the money I came for that. 
Oh, the books I have to get to the end of the books. You know, lost the books, Daniel. 100,000 naira, Daniel. Yes. Have you recharged for holy books? Books. Yes. Those you still collected uh, how much? Uh, was it four weeks ago? Or that was that, that, that you know, lost. So that's three weeks ago. Now I gave you some money too. No, but these books that like, is very 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 many days for my projects and my books. You know, you know, I'm going to school. That's it. I'm here now for the lost book. Where is my phone? I will transfer it to you. Please just go and see. Please lock okay. that up. Nobody. I don't want to see anybody come to know this book again. I want to see. Sure, sure, sure.
Soit c'est pas Parce que je suis un peu plus fort. 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 Je suis un I'm not CCC. I don't civilization. Leave that civilization. I don't want that civilization to come to. Uh, uh, you call him a pussy. Alright, sir. I'm right. trying to you know. At least I'm using you people's kind of phone now. Alright. I'm using everything. You want to do as I'm doing it. Alright. Is that that this one? I'm trying to get into. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
of homeless and runaway children, 85% of children with behavioral disorders, 71% of high school dropouts, 75% of youth in drug abuse centers, and 85% of all youth in prison have in common, they all come from fatherless homes. There are over 25 million kids right now growing up in a home without their dad. And for them, Father's Day is just another fatherless day. But it doesn't have to be this way. The numbers show that children with involved fathers have higher self-esteem, better grade point averages, and they grow up to become the most compassionate adults. Dads, we are vital. The role we play is world changing. God has given us the ability to completely rewrite the future, not only for our sons and daughters, but for the millions of girls and boys who are right now living without a dad. Now is the time to step up. Our kids need us more than ever. The fatherless need us more than ever. There are kids in this building right now who need a man of God in their lives, a role model, a mentor, someone to say, I'm proud of you, someone to have their back, someone to affirm them, someone to show the love of Christ to them. Not just anyone, not just a friend. They need a man. So do all the dads out there reflecting Jesus to their kids, willing to stand up for the abandoned and giving it all for their family. 
we say thank you. God is changing the world through you. Your impact will reach further than you can ever imagine. So be watchful. Stand firm in the faith. Act like men. Be strong. Let all that you do be done in love. Happy Father's Day. Hello everyone, we are here to minister a song by Nathaniel Bassi titled Wonderful Wonder. Please stay blessed as you listen. Oh, 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 oh,
Hey, Johnny and Chachi here, and today we're doing a very special song slash video for dads around the world. Yeah, it's for Father's Day, a day we celebrate fathers for being our dads. And, and what's really cool is that you're going to get to see a behind-the-scenes look at what it takes to create a video like this. Sounds really cool. Oh, it is. And what Chachi's going to be doing is he's going to be actually writing the song. That's the hardest part, really. And then Johnny will take care of all the other details. And there's like a million, but I'm going to get them done because they're for Dad, and he's worth it. Let's do this. Let's go. I'm out. All right, this is it. Let me see that song. Oh, here it is. Okay, here we go. Guys, we're on set in 30 seconds. Okay. All right, well, I guess I'll sight read this thing. Oh, you're really good at that. It'll be fine. And as they say in the theater, break. Wind. A leg. Yeah, a leg, that's right. Audio ready? All right, guys. Let's go ahead and put the uh, graphic back there. Okay, there you go. Oh, that looks fantastic. That's awesome. Okay, I think we're ready. Stay quiet. Three, two, one. And now, a very special tribute for Dad. This song is for you, Dad. The dad that loves his kids with all he has. The dad that loves mom so well. The dad that teaches God's character and demonstrates it himself. For the dad that shows up to every Little League game. And occasionally gets in the game himself. We honor you, Dad, because you, your, your dad would get in the game? If need be. We honor you, Dad, for being who you are. And this song is our way to pay homage to all you dads out there. Homage. And happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. Is that it? That's what came to me. Okay, maybe it is a tad short, so. Well, I guess I could have added a bridge or something. You could have added a song, maybe. So. And you could have added being nice to me. I could have added showing some grace, like my dad taught me when I was a boy. Wait a second, are you throwing up or are you crying? We love you, dads. Happy Father's Day. H Happy Father's Day. Cue the music. Happy Father's Day. Good morning. Um, I prepared my dad a poem and I'll be reading it for you today. Um, he never looks for praises, he's never one to boast. He just goes on quietly working for those he loves the most. His dreams are seldom spoken, his wants are very few, and most of the time his worries will go unspoken to. He's there a firm foundation through all the storms of life, a sturdy hand to hold to in times of stress and strife, a friend we can turn back to when times are good or bad, one of the greatest blessings, the man we call our dad. Thank you. Amen. Uh, a big amen and a big amen. Uh, on a wonderful day like this, uh, Father's Day, it's a wonderful day, uh, a great day. And I want to use this time to just appreciate the Father of Fathers, the King of Kings, and the Lord of Lords. And I want to appreciate each and every one of us. Thank you for this opportunity again to uh, 
uh, talk to us on this special day for the fathers. Uh, it's a day when we also seriously appreciate the mothers, the sisters. You are the pillars. You are the one that make us to tick. You are the one that make us to uh, to be able to do a lot of things that the Lord has ordained us to do. Uh, I want to appreciate every one of you, the sisters. I want to thank God for your life. And I want to bless the Lord God that made you to be our support, our strength. I pray that the Almighty God himself will bless you all richly in Jesus' name. Uh, on this Father's Day, I want to thank uh, our pastor and uh, our pastor, Mrs. The Almighty God will bless you for another opportunity to have a time with you again. Uh, the Almighty God that has lifted you up will continue to carry you higher and higher. And to every one of you, the members of the church, I have no doubt in my mind that what the Lord has started in your life, He will complete it. And I know, as the Lord lived, good things will be coming your way in ways that will, will be a big surprise to you in the days to come. The Lord will bless you. Uh, I just have some few things to say with, to us this morning. Um, I know the brothers, the fathers, especially nowadays, are under quite a lot of pressure all over the world. And of course, I know the mothers are going through a lot too, and the sisters. Today our focus is going to be on our fathers, the, on this special Father's Day. Uh, but before we look at anything, I want us to just, wherever you are, I want you to just, uh, let's give the Lord God Almighty, let's give Him honor, let's give Him praise. Wherever you are, I want you to just lift up your hands and just appreciate the Almighty God, give Him all the glory, give Him all the honor, give Him all the adoration. Tell him that there is no one like him. Tell him that he's the Alpha, is the Omega. Tell him he's the Father of Fathers, is the beginning, is the source, is the Lord. There is no one like him. We give him all the glory, we give him all the praise. Lord, we thank you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So once again, I want to um, thank God for all the fathers, all the brothers, and um, I'm just going to be talking to you about fatherhood. Now, this is a very important thing, and this is a real serious thing. Fatherhood is a calling. It is not a position. Fatherhood is a calling. It is not a position. It's nothing to do with how many children you are. It's nothing to do with your state, with your position, whether married or not. Fatherhood is a calling. All men are fathers. All men. Why? Because you know what? In you is the seed for a beginning. In you, as a brother, is the seed for a beginning. And the Almighty God has created you specially to be the source of a beginning. So fatherhood is a calling. It is not a position. Now, man is designed by God to fulfill the role of a father. God has created you. He created Father Abraham. He said, look, you being a source, I'm going to give you thousands, millions. He said, just look. It is from, what, from you, a source, I'm going to bring out millions, billions that will fill the earth. God has raised you as a brother, as a man, to fulfill the role of a father in the lives of those around you. Not only those ones that come from your loins. From, you are supposed to play a huge role, a huge role in the lives of those all around you. And this has nothing to do with whether you are married or not. You are a source of life. Now, as we all know, COVID-19 is here. We believe it is gone by the mercies of God and the Almighty God. By faith, we believe it is gone. But we know the crisis that it has generated. 
It has generated a huge crisis all over the world, economic crisis, health crisis all over the world. Now, as we all know, this is such an event that nobody prays to see another one in his or her lifetime. It is a monumental crisis all over the world. And it's affecting homes, affecting families. But there has been an age-old truth from the beginning of time. And people have said it over the times. You will notice that in any society, as the men in that society goes, that will be the direction of the society. So as man goes, so goes the nation. So goes the nation. Man is a source. So Satan, our enemy, knows very well that if I can just hit them where it pains, the source, the fathers, if I can just hit the men, the society will be in crisis. So apart from COVID-19, we have an existential crisis that we are already seeing amongst the men, amongst the brothers, that is affecting the society. Man is affected by identity crisis now. Many of the young stars don't even know who they are, what they want to be. The fathers are worried. They are saying, in my time, Many of the fathers now say, in my time, things never used to be like this. But the real truth is, the problem is here and we need to deal with it. But I know, as the Lord lives, God that has made you a brother, that has made you a man, is going to do wonders through your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, in the book of Psalm, chapter 62, from verse 3 to 5, Psalm, chapter 62, from verse 3 to 5, I want you to note some few things that the Lord God says there about the crisis that fatherhood is going through, that men are going through. It's not now. It's not new. It's always been. Why? Because the enemy knows where to hit, where to hit to get the best result. In Psalm 62 from verse 3 to 5, the Bible says, How long will you assault a man? How long will you continue to hit the seed of life? How long? The Bible also goes to explain in Psalm chapter 62 from verse 3 to 5 that man has become like a torturing fence, a fence that is about to collapse. And we can see the impact of that in our society today. The effect on the men is massive. The situation around us and the lives of our brothers is terrible. Lives of many men, lives of many brothers, identity crisis. Many of them do not even know what they want to do. Many of them do not even understand life. Man is under crisis. Fatherhood is in crisis. Man has become a tottering fence, a fence that is about to collapse. And the Lord is saying, who is going to save this fence? Who is going to save this fence. Now, theologians have said that one of the reasons why Jesus chose the 12 men before adding sisters to it, and this is not um, <laughs> to generate an argument, but it's just we're just looking at the scriptures. Why did the Lord Jesus choose the 12 men then started adding sisters? Because there was a crisis that he met. He, he met a crisis in the lives of the men that will affect fatherhood. And it had to be solved. He chose them, he groomed them, and of course, he started adding our sister. Thank God for the sisters. In uh, Psalm 62 from verse 3 to 5 tells us that fatherhood had always been under siege. So this is a very important day in the lives of our men and in the lives of humanity because as the man goes, so goes the nation. As the man goes, so goes the family. It is so important that our fathers be in the right position in life. And I know Jesus Christ of Nazareth is also going to do it. He has started it. He has laid the foundation. He's working on it. And I know it can never fail. Amen. I want you, before we look at, go deeper into this, I want us to quickly look at God's expectation of fatherhood. God's expectation of fatherhood. In the book of Acts, 
the book of Acts of Apostles, chapter 21, from verse 7 to 11. Acts chapter 21, from verse 7 to 11. We see there the story of an interesting man, an interesting father, a very wonderful man called Philip. Now, if you read that scripture, I mean, you will see the, 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 the picture of who a father expects his men to be. A good picture of fatherhood. First thing you will notice in the life of Philip, a man, a father, he was full of the Holy Ghost. He was full of the Holy Ghost. The Bible is looking for men, brothers, that are full of the Holy Ghost, that can carry God, that can carry His presence, that can carry His name and show the whole world, that can carry the heavens, the Almighty God, that can carry Him. He was full of the Holy Ghost. No wonder the Bible goes to tell us that his family was full of divine fruits. His four unmarried daughters, all of them, not even one left. There was no rebel. There was no rebel in the family. There was none of the children that was out of place. The Bible says the four young ladies unmarried were full of the Holy Ghost. They, 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 were, they prophesied. They were full of the Holy Ghost. Just like their father. And before you start wondering, what about their mother? I want you to notice some few things that the Bible says there. Acts chapter 21 from verse 7 to 11. The mother was a godly woman. Why? Because Apostle Paul says, any in this particular story, they came along with other evangelists and other children of God. And they stayed in the house of Philip. They did not meet a woman that would say, don't come to our house. My house is full. This is not an extension of the church. Mm -mm. The Bible says they met a woman that was willing, hospitable, full of life, that provided for the apostles. While Paul was there, Agabus joined him along with other people. What a wonderful woman. Thank God for the sisters. Look, brethren, what I am telling you today, it's so important. God's expectation of a man God's expectation of the work of a man. God expects us to raise a home, to raise families full of the Holy Ghost. The wife should be full of life. The children should receive Jesus. The daughters were full of the Holy Ghost. They were firebrand for Jesus. I know your own home might not be like that, but it can be. And it will be in the name of Jesus. All we have to do is to understand God's concept of fatherhood. Fatherhood is a calling. It is not a position. So the story of Philip, as I said, gives us an insight into fatherhood. And I know that from now on, there's going to be a transformation in your home. And you, the unmarried brothers, you are going to get an understanding today that will lead you, guide you to the path of real fatherhood in the mighty name of Jesus. We're going to look today at another man. Another man that the almighty God himself showed us to be an example of a real man, a father. A man that exhibited godly fatherhood. And that man is none other than Joseph, the father of Jesus. Now, a question many people have often asked is, what made God to choose Joseph? Why would God choose Joseph? What was so special about him? Was he born from the family of prophets? Was he specially anointed to be? Because there must have been something. God will never have gambled. God never gambles. He will never put, have put his son, Jesus, that was calling for such an important task. He would never have put him in a home that was troubled. A home that did not have his presence. So Joseph is a good candidate for the prize of fatherhood. So we're going to quickly look at some things about Joseph. And I know 
please, as the Lord God Almighty helps each and every one of us, as the grace comes upon you, you can become better than Joseph as a man. We're going to quickly look at some things about Joseph. But one of the things I have seen, that everything around Joseph reflects around his godly character. Joseph was simply special. He had the character of a good father. Let's look at some few things about Joseph. Number one, he was a man above the storm. He was a man above the storm. Now, the Bible tells us that an angel appeared to him, gave him some words. You are going to, the woman that you are betrothed to, uh, this is what I have planned for her. There's a special calling upon her life. She's going to do this. She's going to do that. Now, this was a man that was about to get married and he's faced with a crisis. He was being faced with a storm. I'm about to get married and here I am, an angel, telling me that the woman I'm about to marry is an extraordinary woman. He's going to have some qualities. How do I manage this? Now, Joseph was a man above crisis. He was faced with an unexpected crisis, but he handled it well as a man. If you read the book of Matthew chapter 1, from verse 18 to 19, Matthew chapter 1, from verse 18 to 19, Joseph exhibited a very important trait of fatherhood, a man above the storm. In the present situation of the world, brethren, we know what is going on. We can see the crisis all around us. How are you able to cope? How are you as a man able to, able to manage this crisis with dwindling, possibly dwindling financial uh, income? Possibly problems with the job? Possibly even a health crisis, a health problem all around. People to take care of. People are pulling you from right and center. People are calling you. People need your help. You need to manage yourself. You, you are faced with crisis. Like Joseph, you must be a man. A man above the storm. You must be a man above the storm. Now, the, the character of Joseph was revealed in crisis. And he managed the situation very well. As we can, as we are seeing now, in the news dailies, every time we are seeing now that the lockdown has suddenly brought out the real situations in many of our homes. There's, there are reported cases of increased rape in many homes nowadays, problems with husband and wife, wife being the molested because suddenly something has forced the man and the woman to stay together for extensive periods of time. How are you able to manage the situation in your life, even now, even if you are not married? How have you been able to cope? If one of the very important traits of fatherhood is that you must be a man above the storms of life. And I'm praying, whatever be the storm that you are in now, I see Jesus bringing you on top of it, taking you to the top of it, and you are going to abide there in Jesus' name. Amen. Number two. Joseph was a man of unstained righteousness. Unstained righteousness. Now, sin is pulling down men everywhere in the world, including the church nowadays. Pulling down people. Testimonies have been messed up. You must be a man of unstained righteousness. Now, when the angel appeared to Joseph, Joseph could have decided on his own to divorce Mary and throw her into poverty and shame and say, look, I don't want to be part of this. Now, incidentally, theologians that have looked critically at the life and the history of Joseph have said that Joseph possibly was a widower. Possibly his wife had passed on. So they, 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 they came to the conclusion that he must probably have been a widower. Now, if you look at it from that context, if you look at it, you'll see a man that possibly had left, lost a wife, got him married, about to get married again. Something comes and says, look, this is going to be the kind of woman you are marrying. Joseph would have said, you know what? I don't want to be part of this. I'm grieving. I've been grieving for a while. 
I don't need any complications in my marital life anymore. But he did not. He was a man of unstained righteousness. He held on, he was patient, and he, he, he managed the situation. He allowed his righteousness to prevail. Look, I must tell you today, brothers and sisters, real men are found in the furnace of life. Real men are found in the furnace of life. When the heat is hot, is really, is really hot, when the things around you are hot, when the situation is terrible, your character will be revealed. You must maintain your righteousness. Fatherhood is about righteousness, holiness, living right for God. The third one that I want to bring out about the life of Joseph, he was a compassionate man. Look, no matter who you are, you must be a man with compassion. For you to, 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 to be recognized as a father, you must be a compassionate man. Now, tradition in the times of Joseph and Mary says that, shows that according to the book of Deuteronomy chapter 22, Deuteronomy 22 from verse 13 to 21, by tradition, Mary ought to have been put out and sent away and possibly even stoned for getting pregnant out of wedlock. That was the tradition. But Joseph, out of compassion, took her into the house, gave her everything as a wife, kept her full of joy, made her happy, made the environment good for her, and kept his righteousness. He kept his holiness. Now, that story reminds me of the story of the prodigal son. I've discovered in the life of the prodigal son that a real father forgives even before we sin. If you look at the story of the prodigal son, the prodigal son was, the, the, the father, was, you could see that even when the boy was enjoying the wealth in a wrong way, far away from home, the father was grieving at home. He was with that is fatherhood. That is fatherhood. Someone that is was waiting for the son to just say, I am, before saying sorry, grab him, hold him, and give him a kiss on the cheek. That is fatherhood. There is no room for hatred. There is no room for malice. There is no room as a man, as a father, as someone that the Lord is looking up to, to deliver the price of fatherhood. There is no room for hatred, but just mercy and compassion. Amen. And I'm believing God. Any home listening to me today, that is going through a crisis, that is going through some troubles, the Lord, the real Father, will step in there today in Jesus' name. Amen. The fourth thing we want to see about fatherhood and in the life of Joseph is that Joseph discovered that he was a kingdom employee. He was a staff of heaven. He saw that he was a kingdom employee, a staff, someone employed by God. Why, where did I see that in, 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 the, in the story that we read? Now, Joseph saw that a father is a kingdom employee tasked with raising kingdom fruits. Joseph got that understanding from the call on the, by the angel, from the revelation by the angel that, look, listen, my son, you are called to raise up a fruit for me. That is who you are. How the fruit comes is not what matters. How the fruit comes is not the key. You are a kingdom employee. I will give you fruits. Raise the fruit for me. In the book of Matthew, chapter 1, from verse 20 to 23, when Joseph had the encounter with the angel, he got his job description, what he was meant to do as a father. And that is what the Lord is calling you, my brothers, to do going forward. From now, just put it into your mind. You are a kingdom employee, and your main task is to raise fruit. 
whether fruit directly from you or not. You are meant to raise fruit as a kingdom employee. Every man must know you are a kingdom employee and your job description is to raise fruit for the Lord. Praise the Lord. Number five, about father. Every man must know that for you to qualify to be given the price of fatherhood, you qualify by being a bearer of scars, wound, scars, a bearer of scars. Now, when Joseph was told to take in Mary in her condition, I just, I'm just imagining what some friends of Joseph would have said. They would have called him names. Ah, your wife must have been raped by the Roman soldiers. Oh, your wife possibly has a secret lover and you are still taking her in. You are a shameless man. You don't know who you, you, who you are supposed to be. You are not even a man. You are a shameless man. But the Bible says, there was no instance where we heard that Joseph lost his school, lost his composure. No. He kept himself, brought Mary into the house, took care of her, and remained unstained. A father is a bearer of scars. People will say a lot of things. Satan will throw his arrow. You are supposed to be the defender of the home. You are supposed to take all the arrows. You are supposed to take all the beatings just to keep the fruit safe, to keep your wife safe, to keep the people around you safe, to keep your children safe. That is what the Lord is telling you today as a brother. Fatherhood is about being a bearer of scars. But I'm praying your scars will soon become things to celebrate very soon in the mighty name of Jesus. He took the scars without complaints. Why? Because he had earlier been given his job description as a father to raise fruit. And that is the word to you today. Joseph was a man that could have raised God Almighty. The sixth thing, before we close, Joseph was a lover of obedience. Matthew chapter 1, from verse 24 to 25. Matthew chapter 1, from verse 24 to 25. Now, you know that obedience reveals the heart of a man like nothing else. It is obedience that will really show us who you are. Joseph simply took his job description, he obeyed, and he did his work well. That is what the Lord is expecting of each and every one of you, to be a man that obeys. Amen. The seventh thing about Joseph, he was a man under the full control of integrity. Integrity. He was a man of integrity. Verse 23 of Matthew chapter 1 tells us that, look, even as a fully grown-up man, Joseph ensured that Mary's chastity was maintained. He did not touch her. He ensured that the chastity of Mary was maintained. He made sure he kept himself. He, did, he allowed, he did not allow any impure thing to push him to do any evil. He, meant, he ensured that the chastity of Mary was maintained. He was a man of integrity who could have demanded the right to, to be a husband. Look, I married you. Why can't I do anything I want to do? But no, he kept himself. Why? Integrity. For you to exhibit the fatherhood that the Lord is looking for, integrity must be in your life. You must be a man of integrity. Integrity in business, integrity in relationship, integrity in your finances, integrity everywhere. That must be your new you. Amen. And the last thing before we close. Why did God choose Joseph to be the father of his son, Jesus Christ of Nazareth? Number eight. He saw Joseph as a way, not an obstruction. Joseph was a way, not an obstruction. You remember what Jesus said? said, I am the way. Now, Joseph showed that he was a way, not an obstruction. Why? When God chose Joseph, he saw that he was dependable. 
he saw that it was not an obstruction. He knew that whatever I tell him to do to my son, he will do. Can the Lord say that about you? Are you raising up the, 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 your children or those around you the way the Lord wants? Are you an obstruction or a way? Fatherhood is about being a way, not an obstruction. God trusted Joseph to take care of his son because he knew that Joseph was fully yielded to him, totally. He knew that there was no part of Joseph that was kept away. Every part of Joseph was for God. So he knew, I can trust this man. This is a way, not an obstruction. Joseph was a way, not an obstruction. A father must be a way. Don't be an obstruction. Whatever the Lord wants to do with the fruits under you, yield to the Lord. And it is my prayer that as we celebrate this Father's Day, the full essence of being a father is going to be shown in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Let us pray. Father in heaven, I give you glory, I give you praise, and I give you honor for all your children listening. And I'm praying for the brothers, the men, especially today, that as you have made them the way, please, Lord, don't let them lose the way. Please uphold each and every one of them and let them be able to fulfill this commission in the mighty name of Jesus. And to our mothers, the sisters, I pray that, Lord, you will keep them for us. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. God bless you all. Thank you.